everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Adam, this is my channel, Adam Sews. For everyone that is new here, this is Friday Sews, and this is where we talk about everything that we've been up to in the week, a bit of a weekly roundup, what we've got planned, and what we've been buying, and things that were coming through the door, basically. Which, surprisingly, not much has come through the door this week, which is a big surprise for me, because normally I have parcels turning up everywhere that I don't even remember ever ordering. Um, but I will start with what has turned up this week because I can get that out of the way nice and quickly. Um, so mainly, the only thing really that's turned up this week is some fabric that is not truly pink for once. Um, so I ordered some, um, it's from Olive and Flow Handcraft, which is a UK supplier of Tudor Pink, Ruby Star Society um, and other lovely, lovely brands. Um, and I completely blame Danny for this one, who is Pocket for Two over on Instagram. If you don't follow her, go and check out her page. Her grid is full of colourful loveliness, and she's got the cutest dog in the world as well. Um, she's got a Brussels griffin that is called Gruff, and he is just adorable. He is basically like a long, fuzzy-haired version of Luna, um, the way that he behaves, everything. So, yeah, I'll pop a link to Danny's Instagram down below if you haven't followed her. Um, so she had been making something from the new Ruby Star Society collection, or one of the newest ones, which is called Sugar Comb. And she'd used some fabric that I just had to have. I'm not going to lie. I saw it, wanted it, got to have it, ordered it. And I blame her completely for it, because I don't normally order for fabric from other brands other than Tula, purely because the problem is real. Um, and... There's a whole range of sugar cone and I thought I'm not getting the whole entire range because I'm not getting sucked down another wormhole that I do not need to go down. But there was this one that I did need to get and that is the gummy bears. So I got the gummy bears in blue, purple and pink because, I mean, who doesn't need a little snippet of gummy bears? So I'm going to keep these in my personal stash for now. And I'm going to use them for something for myself. Don't quite know what yet, but who doesn't love a gummy bear? So yeah, that is from that was from Olive and Flow Handcraft, um, who have got a lovely shop, which is oliveandflowhandcraft.co.uk, which I will link down below if you want to go and have a look at their fabrics. They also sent me some little samples of a new line that's coming out, or that is just out, which I believe is, let me have a look, it is from Rifle Paper Company, or orchid orchard is what it's called um and again not a company i would normally order from well not a, a fabric i would normally order from but this stripe if you imagine this as a little binding would be beautiful because it's got that lovely metallic gold stripe so i might have to go back and get some of that who knows we'll see what happens um so besides that not a lot of other stuff has turned up this week i've had a little bit of Tudor arrive i had two meters of two of the fairy dusts because someone was selling them on a d stash and i also had another meter of the black and white stripe turn up just because i found it on ebay it was on a reduced clearance thing and the lady only had one meter left so i thought you know what i use it all the time i might as well just top up my bolt um so that is what i've received this week in terms of things that have turned up now what have i made this week well the first thing that i made this week was it had to be because i spent the whole weekend doing it pretty much um and that is poo from the hundred acre wood sew along which was kindly gifted to me by my lovely friend john that is art is quilting um and this is poo so it's a huge block um, it's got three bumblebees out of the 16 of the whole entire quilt that the whole entire quilt contains. These bumblebees are adorable, but my lord, did I have problems with them. And that's mainly because I got cocky and thought, you know what, I'm just going to do what I want to do and look at the pictures. And Idiot Adam didn't read the instructions that said that six are facing one way. No, sorry, eight are facing one way, eight are facing the other way. And I just thought, meh, I'll just make them all facing one way until I got about three quarters of the way through making the beads and then realised that they were supposed to be facing different directions. So I had to unpick quite a lot of bees. And then I sewed them all up again and then I got about three quarters of the way through again and realised that I'd put the body units, because the stripes are slightly different, the wrong way around on four out of the last eight that I was doing, so I had to unpick four of them again. But we have a whole set of bees now. They all are the right way. And they're all put to one side for the rest of the blocks in the quilt. 
which I will not be making bees anytime soon, but they're all made now, so they're ready to go in. So the bee saga is over. Um, and then I started on some other items which are going in a box that are going over to um, John that we have sort of started curating each other little gift boxes. Um, and his lovely husband wanted, well, saw my minky ensemble and said that he would like some minky pants. So I have made him some lovely minky pants. Um, and do you know what? I'm glad that I made mine first because the pockets on them are tiny. So I've made the pockets bigger. I've made them longer because he's a lot taller than me and mine are just the right length for me. So they would have been way too short. So I have made another pair of the minky pants, which are so soft. And funny story about the minky outfit that I have, which I've been wearing most of the day, but I sort of thought to myself, I really do need to put some normal clothes on at some point today. So I got changed a little while ago. But the dogs are obsessed with that outfit so the minute I've got it on they want to sleep up against me on me around me everything so the last little bit of it that I've got hidden up top here I think I'm gonna to have to make Luna a bed out of because it's not really big enough to back a quilt with and it's not really big enough to do anything in terms of garments so I think what I'm gonna do is just make her a great big furry donut bed so I'm at the moment waiting for Mr begins with a name of a river don't want to promote them because i don't particularly think they need it um i'm waiting for them to deliver me some fairly inexpensive pillows that i can cut open and take all the stuffing out of because it's much much cheaper than buying polyfill um, and then i will make her a bed so on the theme of that the other thing that i've made this week is a sweater or jumper or however you want to call it um, for John, I was going to make him one out of Minky, but obviously, as I said earlier, I don't have enough. Um, so I have gone for the next best thing, and that is Beetlejuice. So I've made this lovely oversized um, sweater with Beetlejuice fabric. It's got black ribbon, uh, sorry, charcoal ribbon on it, sort of to pick up the charcoal that's in some of the um, prints. And I have bound the back neckline with some of the lovely specky seems just bias tape just because it gives the neckline a little bit of stability at the back so that will be going in with the minky pants um to go over to canadia um so you know i'm just basically dressing everyone in canada now um and the other thing that i made this week which was a pre-order linked to john which is the lovely cassidy that works with john and matt at artist court in and who is one of the little Squirrels, squirrel away, cutting all of those beautiful kits that go out to everyone and packing everyone's orders. And Casty is getting a caddy. And the caddy that I have been requested to make is Nightshade Deja Vu because she loves everything spooky and witchy. So we've gone for uh, the witch's faces on the front, the sides and the other side. I've got my little pink um, elephant leather well, elephant effect leather um adam so's label on there i put loads of ribbons on it this little um stick uh, this little label here says made with love and a sprinkle of magic because obviously magic which is all goes hand in hand and the other one says handmade one of a kind on there because it is handmade and one of a kind because no one else will ever have one exactly the same because i don't tend to make them identical every time i make a caddy um, and then inside it's got the potions and the moons and clouds so yeah, that is going over to Canada with the other stuff um, for the lovely Cassidy that works for them. And I have also made her a lovely little spooky witchy notebook to go with it, which is just a lined notebook with some lovely Tula ribbons on there that complement the sort of colours of the whole thing. And this has got the little witches hats, the little cauldrons and so on and so forth. And this is from Art Gallery. It's not spooky and witchy, it's one of the other ones. Can't remember, but it's part of their Halloween range from about a year or two ago. Um, and I don't know whether they've actually done one this year. I could be wrong, but I've got a funny feeling they didn't. And I think that last year's was the last one that they done, but I could be completely wrong. Then the other one that I made was another caddy, which is for the lovely Becca, who contacted me probably about two months ago, but I have literally only just got around to get into her pre-order because life has been so busy um, with pattern releases and everything else. Um, 
I've got two more on my pre-order book to try and get through over the next week. One is going to New Zealand and the other one is going to Newcastle, I believe. Um, so this is the other caddy that I've made this week, which is the lovely hedgehogs from Tiny Beast and the little bunnies from Besties. Um, and I've got some of the hedgehog ribbon on here in the other colourway. Again, another one of my lovely Adam Sose labels. Um, these are from Inspired Leather Co, which is Mari, who is Mari Sose. That's her company. And then we've got some more labels, more ribbons, a little sewing machine. Hedgehogs on one side, bunnies on the other, and a little handmade rainbow label. And then inside, I've just gone for bunnies and different size polka dots because it just ties in with the thing. So yeah, I'm really happy with how that's turned out. I think it's really cute. It's really vibrant, which is, I love vibrant, as you all probably know. So yeah, that is what I've made this week, what I've been buying, what I've been doing. And my plans are to try and get the rest of my pre-orders done next week so I can basically close my book for a week or two and say, right, now's the time to make some bags that I haven't yet made. Um, and I'm going to be making some stock bags for the store. Um, so there'll be some sort of like um, pre-made in stock um, bags in there. So I'm go I think what I'm going to do is make a couple of the lunch bags, a couple of caddies, a couple of other things, maybe a large um duffel bag again because i haven't made one of those in a while and i'm quite excited about making one of those again so we shall see what happens but there is a lot going on over the next month or two i've got a retreat at the end of november i've got a sewing social the week after next on the 18th of october i believe it is which is going to be run with myself and the lovely Catherine from sofa to makery um and i'm trying to think of what else is going on but there is other stuff in the background which will eventually come to light um and yeah that's about it really i have however i'm going to quickly pause and spin my camera around because there is something that has happened this week which i do want to talk to you about so the other thing that i did this week which i'm on a funny angle because i need the camera pointing slightly down is i have made myself a new cutting not cutting pressing station and that is this one here which is this great big ironing board now which i used to have two separate ones so i've joined them together recover the whole thing in tulip pink raw and then underneath i've got a new calax unit which has got all of my press and stuff in so it keeps my irons my hams my clappers everything that needs to be under there basically as you can see on there there is a pre-cut caddy which needs to be made um yes yeah, so i thought i would just share with you what i've made so for anyone that wants to know what this is it is a half inch ply board covered in a layer of heat resistant batten, standard batten, and then another layer of heat resistant batten with a layer of calico cotton over the top. And then I then covered in lovely Tudor pink wide back sateen, which is stapled all the way around separately to the calico, which means that when this gets worn out, I can just take the top cover off and recover it, which is what I do with all my boards all the time. Um, so I will just leave it there for this week, I think, pretty much. So yeah, if you um, want to make one of these, they're really, really easy to make. You just need to find yourself a nice little unit that will go underneath that's the right height for where you want it. Um, and yeah, just cover a piece of thick hardboard or chipboard or fiberboard or whatever you can get your hands on, really. Um, and it doesn't really seem to transfer any heat from one side to the other. So you don't have any issues with... Um, like damp or anything underneath it from the steam because it just sort of airs off by itself. So I hope that has been something that might give you an idea as to how to give yourself a nice new pressing board. I will see you very soon. Have a good weekend. I'll talk to you next week and bye for now.